Hi everybody, welcome to our YouTube channel. Please remember to like, subscribe and share our videos. We will be posting more lessons on learning photography. We hope you have watched our previous videos on learning photography and in case you have any question or any reply or any comment or any suggestion, please comment below or email us on the emails that are provided below on our description. I would like to proceed to the three pillars of photography. In photography, much as you learn about the basics of camera handling, uh, settings and everything, there are three main things that you should learn when it comes to photography. And they are ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And I'll be able to handle each and every one of them. You'll hear people talk about the exposure triangle and it will be illustrated as you can see. And again, you will hear people talk about uh, pillars of photography. They are one and the same thing. So maybe to start us off, let's talk about ISO. Along your photography career, you'll hear a lot of these or increase your ISO, reduce your ISO, etc. Now, what is ISO? Uh, much as we know that it's one of the major pillars of photography in the exposure triangle along with its other brothers, shutter speed and aperture, ISO is simply defined as the level of sensitivity of your camera sensor to available light. Uh, to put it simply, it's the level of sensitivity of your camera sensor to the available light in that environment that you are shooting in. In that, a lower ISO number means the camera sensor is the less effective to light and uh, to light that it's receiving, while a higher ISO number means the sensor is highly sensitive to the light that it's receiving. If your ISO is 100, that means uh, the light that is coming inside the camera is little. But when the ISO is at 1600, then more light is coming into the camera. So sometimes when you are shooting in low lit situations, you may be forced to crank up your ISO a little bit. But again, you have to know that also raising your ISO too high, it has its own consequences. And the consequences we are talking about here is that it will show a lot of grain. It will show a lot of noise. Your picture will look like it's overexposed and it will look like it's grainy. And I will show an example uh, here. So sometimes when the picture has a lot of grain or has a lot of noise, it might become unusable. So you should only raise your ISO when you are unable to brighten the photo via the other pillars, which are the shutter speed or the aperture. And we are going to talk about it. Again, sometimes you may also use your shutter speed and you will notice that the longer the shutter speed that you have, the subject may appear blurry. So we'll talk about also how to set your shutter speed. Now, every camera has a different sense, has a different range of ISO values depending on the one that you have bought. But the common ones that I have seen from my experience in photography, they range between ISO 100 to ISO 6400. But some of these high-end cameras like the 7Ds, the 6Ds, the 5Ds, the ISO may go as high as 10,000. So it depends on, on which camera you simply have. But most beginner, beginner or entry level cameras will have ISO 100 to ISO 6400. You should know that when you double your ISO speed, you are doubling the brightness of the photo. So for example, uh, if your ISO is at 400, and you double it, uh, and you, you 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 double your ISO to 800. Of course, the image will appear more brighter at ISO 800 than it will be on ISO 400. The same goes for ISO 200 and 400. Again, a photo at ISO 400 will be twice as much brighter than the one which is at ISO 200, which will also be double brighter than the one which is at ISO 100. Now, from my experience when we are shooting all over, you'll always find photographers asking, uh, which is the right ISO to use where? 
uh, which is the right ISO that will be ideal for indoor uh, bright sunlight outside and every other thing. And maybe from that little experience that we have, uh, talk about ISO 100. Uh, most of the times I usually use this ISO when I'm shooting outside and it's quite sunny because of course it's bright. So I may decide to leave the ISO at 100, then maybe adjust the aperture and the shutter speed. Again, ISO 400 uh, can also be used outdoor or when you have good lighting, when you have good lighting. But again, most of the time, uh, it will be ideal when we are talking about a cloudy day, uh, when the light is not too much. Let's talk about the light being less intense. And again, it can be used indoor uh, when maybe your subject is near a window, which is a source of light. Now, again, we also have ISO 800. This one, I use it mostly indoors. And uh, when I'm doing uh, my own shooting, I will have an additional light to supplement uh, what is not there. So to supplement maybe the ambient light that is there. So either it's a flash, uh, either it's your floodlights, maybe if you are shooting a film, and then maybe I'll set the ISO at 800, then adjust the rest, the shutter speed and the aperture. When you find me using a ISO, which is 1600 or higher, it's when maybe it's uh, the lighting is so less, maybe it's dark and there is no enough lighting and maybe my flash or my speed light or my flood lights are not doing a good job of supplementing the light, then I will crank up my ISO. But again, that is also very rare. Before I go to maybe ISO 1600, I have adjusted the aperture, I have adjusted the shutter speed. I have seen that the image looks somehow better before maybe cranking it up all the way. Now, for many entry levels uh, DSLRs, uh, we want to see where can we find the ISO. Uh, because many, many, many cameras have this ISO in different places. Now, for some of these entry level DSLRs, the ones that may be the cheaper ones that you buy as you start off, you may find it or you may need to open the menu. Uh, some will label it as the quick menu and find the section that is clearly labeled ISO. Then select the value you want. In other cameras, uh, they, 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 they allow you to enable the ISO to auto. You can use it in auto, especially if you are learning. Now, when we go to those higher end cameras like the 7Ds, the 5D, Mark IVs, etc., you'll find that they have a dedicated ISO button. Actually, at the back of the camera, it's labeled there, ISO. Some will be at the back, others will be on the top. So it depends. So once you press the button, you can use the wheel at the back of the camera to adjust it to the ISO that you you would want. Again, if you don't see a button clearly labeled ISO, it is still possible that your camera will let you program one to perform that task, just as we do it in our Android phones or our iPhones too. Uh, others, cameras may have a dedicated wheel that already has various ISO settings marked. So that one is even easier because you'll just adjust it from either 200 to 400 to 800 because it's already labeled there. You just adjust according to what you may need. So different cameras have different settings. I would also recommend that you be able to read the manuals that come with the cameras so that you can also be able to know where which is placed in every other camera. You can also uh, manual practice it get a subject uh, that is near to you and try adjusting the buttons from ISO 100 to the topmost ISO that you have in your camera and you will see that it goes, it gets brighter as you go. So that's all for ISO. Is there anything else that you would like to learn about ISO? Please uh, write down there on the comments uh, any questions and I will be able to answer please remember to also subscribe to our channel and share let me know what you've learned today